Let's go ahead and dig into this box and show you what I carry over the past four years, spare parts that I've collected and things that I've found are pretty important to have on hand, well, to keep you from getting stuck in a, a sticky situation. So let's dive into it. Literally, let's dive into it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Why Wait. I'm Chris, and today I want to talk about the RV spare parts that I travel with, and the parts that, well, you should be traveling with too. Because a lot of these parts in this box right here, and this really is my RV spare parts box, a lot of these parts that I travel with are pretty important things that are basically gonna help you out in emergencies or keep you from getting stranded on the road, and that sort of stuff. So we're not really talking about like an extra sewer hose or some kind of batteries or something, you know, something strange like that. These are pretty important things that are going to help uh, in case something pretty catastrophic kind of happens, like slide out system stuff, suspension kind of stuff, and things like that. Okay, number one, and I moved my box over here, so it's out of the way a little bit is this little gizmo right here. And this is a Schwintec motor. And most of you out there have a Schwintec slide, whether you know it or not. The Schwintec slides are the ones that have the little rack on the side of them uh, kind of look like this. Uh, usually lighter slides, the bedroom slides, um, some lighter models and maybe the main slides. But needless to say, at some point, you're probably gonna have a Schwintec motor go out on you. Let me set this over here. And this happened to us, and I would have loved to have had a spare Schwintec motor on hand at the time, but I did not. We were packing up for the day, trying to put a slide out in. The slide out would not go in all the way. You got a problem. What? Slide out's not coming in. Great. No. Yeah. Figure it out. When your slide out cannot go in, you cannot hit the road. And you know, this creates a stressful situation. You have reservations made, you know, you gotta leave that spot. The campground's trying to kick you out. You know, your, your time's up. So you're trying to get all these things solved. You're trying to troubleshoot the problem. You may notice if you have a Schwintec slide when you go to bring it in, if it's starting to sound a little funny or if it's going in a little bit slower, you might wanna go ahead and invest in carrying a spare motor because it may be a sign that your motor is about to go bad. I have a whole video of it. You can check it out here. I had to do a lot of troubleshooting, I had to figure out how to manually get the slide in get to another destination, and then I had to go purchase a new uh, motor for one side, and I had to install it. I will say, I don't wish this upon anybody. It is not an easy job. Depending on which side of your slide out it's in, it can be very hard to get to the motors, but it's very doable, and it's going to save you a lot of money versus having an RV tech come out and do it. And if we would have had the motor already on hand, at least you can have an RV tech come out. You now have the part on hand ready to install versus trying to get a uh, RV parts store, one, two, three days worth of shipping, same with Amazon. So it's a part that can actually get you back on the road pretty fast. And it's not a bad idea if you have a Schwintec slide to go ahead and maybe invest in keeping one of those motors on hand. All right, next one, let's jump back in here. RV fuses, not technically RV fuses, but spare fuses. This is actually an auto kit, but a fuse is a fuse. And this is a 244 piece kit right here. Listen, if you're new to this, you're gonna find on all these little components all around this thing, there's all these little hidden fuses all over the place. And last thing you wanna be doing is trying to replace a fuse and get back on the road because an awning can't come in or something like that. Even some of the leveling system requires certain fuses. So carrying a big fuse kit like this with all these different variety size fuses really comes in handy around the RV. And we'll have links to some of this stuff, whatever we can, Amazon links in the description down below if you guys wanna check out any of it. Let's move on. We're gonna jump outside because this next one's a little bit too big to keep in my box. Spare tire. This one may seem obvious, but hey, you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't get down here. 
They don't check to one, see if they have one. Familiarize yourself with how it works, how to lower it. And then you want to check and make sure it's not just a piece of crap anyways, because it's been down here for 10 years and it's no better than the one that just blew out. You need to bring these down every once in a while. Uh, check the date code on them, see how old they are. Check the tread, make sure it's just not, you know, degrading. And like I said, familiarize yourself with the process of getting it down. And when you do go to buy new tires for the RV, don't forget to go ahead and replace this one as well. There's no point in carrying a super old tire around with you if it's no better than the one that just basically gave you the problems and blew out to begin with. So yeah, uh, spare part, spare tire. So keep an eye on these, maybe obvious, but you'd be surprised uh, if you don't check it once in a while. Make sure you have one, make sure it's good. Okay guys, let's walk over to the back of the truck here and pop this toolbox right here. And I'll show you one of the most important spare parts that I've actually had to use twice and actually had it on hand both times. So I was really happy about it. And you can see it right over there. And that is a leaf spring. Carrying a spare leaf spring with you is going to come in super handy. It's like a blown tire. Most people have the spare tire. Well, eventually the leaf spring is going to break as well for most people. It's pretty common to ha happen at some point traveling around these rough roads. Yep, carrying a spare leaf spring comes in extreme handy. Again, this is one of those things that you may not be comfortable with or know how to change out on the side of the road. And even if you do know how, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to get it back on depending. But if you have it and you call somebody, well, hey, you're gonna have the part. They're not gonna have to go find it. You're not gonna have to go order it. You have it, it can be changed out. You can get back on the road, get where you're going super quick and it's come in handy again twice for us. So they're not very expensive, 40, 50, $60 for a leaf spring. Go ahead, pick up one or even two of those and carry them with you. Let's jump back inside. It's hot out here. Phew, hot out there. So we just talked about broken leaf springs and carrying one of those. Well, along with that, you're gonna want some of this hardware right here. If you technically break a leaf spring anyways, it is highly recommended that you go ahead and uh, change out the U-bolt as well. So I would carry some spare U-bolts as well as the tie down plates for the U-bolts and the leaf springs. These are various things that you wanna keep on hand as well. You can quickly change out the leaf spring, use the old parts, that's fine, get where you're going, and then maybe go ahead and put the new U-bolt and the rest of the new parts on, it's highly recommended. Not only do I carry the U-bolts and the uh, leaf spring, the tie-down plates, but we also have the uh, extra heavy-duty uh, shackles here. You can see you got the Zerk fittings on them. All of the bolts and nuts and washers and pieces for that in this bag right here. Now, we don't actually use this anymore because we have a different system. We've recently upgraded to the Roadmaster Comfort Ride Slipper Spring System. So this stuff is pretty much obsolete, including my leaf spring out there. I still have it. I need to uh, give it away. I need to find somebody who has the exact same trailer as I do and uh, let them carry that because it's just added weight I don't need anymore ever since we switched to a new system because we got sick of breaking leaf springs and I got sick of carrying spare parts and with the new system, I really it's really not necessary. But these are good items to have on hand. Any of that suspension system, any kind of spare part that you can have for that down there, honestly, is good to have a few of those on hand when traveling. Next, I will mention to go along with all that, and I used to carry these, and again, I don't have them anymore because I've changed out my system, um, but I would recommend carrying a set of bearings, at least one extra bearing in the bearing seals. This is something we had for a while. I don't have any on hand right now. Actually, I, th I think I still have some of the bearing seals around here somewhere, and I think they're still compatible with my new system. I have to find those, but if something was to happen, and you were to burn up a bearing, break something in there. And again, if you don't feel comfortable doing something on the road, changing out your own bearings, replacing some of these parts, just having the spare parts on hand is gonna get you where you're going so much quicker. If you do call out roadside emergency, or you get a tech, or whatever the case may be, if you have the parts already on hand, you're going to save hours, if not days, trying to switch these out. So uh, that's one thing. I also recommend having some bearings and bearing seals because those are known to fail as well, and it's good to have that. And by the way, guys, if there's any spare parts that you're out there 
carrion that I'm missing today and you feel it's pretty important, shoot it down in the comments down below because hey, I'm like a Boy Scout, I like to always be prepared. So if there's something I'm missing, I wanna know about it. The last spare part I wanna talk about, spare parts for in this case anyways, is basically plumbing parts. This isn't as important. This isn't gonna basically uh, keep you from getting on the road probably more likely. This isn't something that's gonna you know break down and oh, I wish I had those plumbing parts, but it, it's good to have some of this on hand for quick repairs or modifications. And you can see I have some PEX piping right back here. That's a six foot piece that kind of goes back through there that I keep on hand. And then you wanna make sure you have the uh, proper tools to do the job, which is usually gonna be some PEX cutters, some cinch crimpers, and up here in my water attachments, uh, this is where I keep any kind of plumbing attachment, uh, shark bite clips, anything that needs to be done in case I have a major leak. So I went ahead and opened uh, my little plumbing drawer up there. And again, I have uh, basically like soft pex piping that you can use. It's used in certain places of your RVs. I have different hose clamps for that. We have little uh, ball valve joints in case you need to put this in somewhere so you can shut the water off you know, remotely. Just various pieces that we've collected over the years, different attachments, things. We actually keep various different size shark bite uh, cinch clamps around, things like this, like a little half inch coupling piece. Yeah, just go into any basic box store. It doesn't have to be an RV specific store to, to find everything you need for RV pecs and, and water fittings and just get yourself a good arsenal in case you have a little water disaster or you want to do a quick modification and you're not trying to run up to the hardware store to fix something. You can't run the water in your RV because it's Sunday, the stores are closed and you don't have, you know, some of the proper stuff you wish you would have had. So, but yeah, that's just a quick tip to keep some of this stuff on hand. It'll, it'll come in handy, trust me. And we have lots of other spare parts and spare things that we carry, but the ones we talked about today are kind of the important ones, I feel like, to, to really help you out in a, like I said, sticky situation. So, guys, as always, get out there, start your full-time RV adventure, because why wait? We'll see you next week.